Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now while I was sorting through some of my computer bits, I came across this PCIe X1 to X16 adapter. Powered by a USB 3 and Molex connection, this allows you to add a standard graphics card to an older or smaller form factor motherboard that may not have the appropriate slot by default, or not enough PCIe X16 slots if you want to do some mining. This one came included with a custom system I found on eBay a while back and it was being used to power a pretty weak card that probably wasn't severely impacted by the slower bandwidth or lack of PCIe lanes. In today's one, I thought why don't we add this to my modern gaming system and see just how presumably bad performance will be. Of course, there's really no need to do this if you have a working PCIe X16 slot, but I don't know, let's assume that that slot is broken and I'm using this to tide me over until my new motherboard arrives. That's a scenario that might be relevant to maybe half a percent of you watching, but hey, it's a good enough figure for me to proceed with these shenanigans. To get this working, the graphics card plugs into the riser itself, which then connects to the PCIe X1 slot via USB 3. Using this little thing, I somehow managed to not lose during my house move. A Molex connector then powers the riser itself and the 8-pin power connector can be plugged into the graphics card from the PSU as normal. In this case I'm using a 3050 which usually runs in PCIe 4.0 x8 mode. Today it's running at PCIe 3.0 x1 mode. It does look cool at least, the idea of having a graphics card on the desk instead of sitting atop the motherboard just looks well, unique, but looks aside, let's take a look at what you can expect from the performance side of things. The gameplay on screen is from the card running in PCIe X1 mode, but I've thrown some comparative figures up as well just to give you an idea of how much performance we're losing on a game by game basis. Cyberpunk didn't do too badly, at least not outside of Night City. Venturing downtown soon crippled the frame rate, but the game is still sort of playable. As I said before, this situation probably isn't one that many of you will find yourselves in, especially when most, if not all, modern motherboards have a PCIe X16 slot especially ones that are compatible with new processors. It was only when I tested the game under normal circumstances, in this case PCIe 4.0 x8 mode, that I realised how big the difference was, but actually, in Cyberpunk, it's not as bad here as some of the results you're about to see. Elden Ring hates this configuration when I tested the RX 6400 and 6500 XT a while back in PCIe 3 mode, both of which have four PCIe lanes, the game really didn't run well, so I knew that it would face problems here too. Every game did, don't get me wrong, but this felt the worst to actually play today and it's clear from the percentile lows that this wasn't smooth by any means. Normally the game runs at a very respectable capped 60fps with fairly solid percentile figures too. That said, it's not a completely unplayable experience, I guess. Fortnite ran really well, and again it was only when I tested the card under normal circumstances that I realised just how much performance we were losing. Interestingly though, I'd say that this is still a playable experience, and if you didn't know what you were missing out on, about 80 odd frames on average, then you could still enjoy this game if you were making do with this absolute Frankenstein method of gaming. There is of course the odd dip and drop though. Forza Horizon 5 is a bit like Elden Ring in that it takes even more of an exception to the reduced bandwidth and lanes. This is reflected in the percentile figures. I forgot I was working on this experiment and when I tested the game the next morning I was like why is it running so badly? At least I had created the problem so I knew how to fix it but man this game isn't keen on making friends with my adapter, riser, whatever you want to call it. It's playable to an extent sure but I mean we're still hitting over 30 fps, it's just not ideal. This was expected of course, and no one should really try this unless they have to. GTA 4 is an older game and one that seems to suffer a bit anyway in terms of percentile lows, especially when the settings are turned way up. Even under normal circumstances there are frame rate dips and drops to be seen, which are only made worse by the PCIe X1 setup. 
I find myself playing through GTA 4 every couple of years because in my opinion it's one of the best in the series and it runs really well on most modern hardware if you don't mind making some sacrifices to certain settings, like the view distance for example. I had visions of the Molex connector just catching fire or something under the strain but I don't know if that's entirely possible. I'm certainly surprised that the system didn't cut out or switch off or something but Maybe it would have if we were using a more powerful graphics card. Red Dead Redemption 2 hits close to 60 FPS outside of towns and settlements, but venturing towards Valentine really caused the performance to drop. The percentile lows were respectable and overall the performance was okay. I could certainly play the game like this, that's for sure, even if the sometimes sudden loss of frames can be a bit off-putting during intense action scenes and other spontaneous shootouts. I mean, you don't want to get through a certain story mission or something and then all of a sudden the game just drops to 35 FPS from 60. That won't feel too great, but luckily the game doesn't actually get to 60, so that's not you can't, you can't really worry about that too much. Finally then we have The Witcher 3, which was another one of those results that made me think, hmm, this isn't so bad, until I actually tested for the comparative figures under normal circumstances. It was only then I realised what I was missing out on, which in this case was about double the performance. There's even more of a boost to performance when it comes to the 1 and 0.1% low figures. Now it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference whether you're in or outside of certain cities and towns. The game runs pretty similar no matter where you are with the PCIe X1 adapter installed. The crowds of Novigrad and wherever else don't really cause the percentile lows to drop. It just seems to be a bandwidth thing and not a result of crowd density but that could be because it's set to low anyway. Now of course all of today's results were for a bit of fun and there's no need to game like this if you have a perfectly working PC with the appropriate PCI Express X16 slot. Gaming isn't exactly what these adapters are intended for, I think they're for miners or for people who just don't have the appropriate connection but that doesn't mean that a certain problem can't be solved with one because it can. I'd be inclined to just wait the day or two it takes for a new motherboard to arrive if the PCI Express slot was broken, unless you already have one of these lying about and you live somewhere where delivery takes like a week or something, but there we go. I found this thing in a box and just had to get the video out of my system, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one when we'll be testing another older graphics card.